Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy. You know, I've had some requests to kind of give a tour of Shamrock Banks Observatory. So I had a few minutes today and I thought I would come out and do it. Let's go ahead and have a look. And here is Shamrock Banks Observatory. As you can see, we've got our plaque up with our sponsor, Judy Bassett. This is the platform that I built earlier this year. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of the equipment. We'll start off right here. This is actually the mount for my astronomical binoculars. They're quite heavy. They're 25, 100 binoculars, and they weigh quite a bit. So you mount them right there. You have a counterweight for them. And you can have a look around, and as soon as you find something, you can let the binoculars go, and they'll stay right there. Underneath it, we have some storage for tripods for some of the telescopes. Over here, we've got some of my Battenoff masks, my assistant, Otis the cat, and just some little shelves here. But here's the heart and soul of the observatory. Now the main component of any observatory is the mount that you put the telescope on. This is a Celestron CGXL. It has a capacity of 75 pounds. I've got several counterweights for it for different telescopes. And it's mounted in a thousand pounds of concrete on a steel pier. So it's a very stable base for the telescopes. The telescope that we have mounted right now is the 8-inch Ritchie Crateon, which is one of my mainstay telescopes for the uh, observation of asteroids and comets. It'll see things down to about magnitude 19, and it's actually a very good telescope. It's lightweight and easy to move around. Now here's the light train on the back of the telescope. Here's the back end of the telescope. This part right here is a robotic focuser made by Prima Luz. Now this component right here is what's called an off-axis guider. There's a small prism in this ring that actually intercepts some of the light coming out of the telescope and sends it up to this guide camera. The majority of the light, however, goes back to the main camera of the system. And in this case, this is a ZWO 533MM, which means it's a mono camera. It's a cooled camera, you have to power it but you can plug the focuser and the guide camera into it as well as run everything off of one cable down to the computer. Now the computer itself that we use is an Alienware gaming laptop, which I got mostly for the computing power. Uh, it really handles the video very well. It handles the images, uh, runs the telescope, handles the plate solving does it all very quickly. It's a very powerful computer and it's hooked up to power out here. And that is all connected up here to a wireless modem which runs right off my house internet and gives me a very, very fast connection. I've got some battery backup out here, a couple of spare tools. And in the background, you see the red garbage can that I use to cover the telescope mount when it's not in use. The telescope comes in at night, the mount stays out here. It's protected with that hard plastic garbage can. Now here we see Otis in his favorite spot. He likes to sit up there and groom himself as he watches me do the astronomy. Now this is the secondary mount for Shamrock Banks Observatory. Um, it is an Explore Scientific Exos 2 and has a capacity of about 28 pounds. That's the 110 Eon refractor on it right now. And it's made out of basically a table base just bolted to a tree stump. So you don't have to spend a lot of money getting a good pier for your telescopes. Secondary mount is in a different spot on the yard so that I can see different parts of the sky. Here's the back of the house. And as you see, here's my radio antenna. You see several additional antennas there. There's a long wire antenna for the longer wavelength bands. And then on the roof, you'll see a cobweb antenna and a discone antenna. 
The disc on antenna is the one that looks like a star on top of the cobweb, the flat cobweb antenna. And that is used to track the ISS. I've repurposed an old television antenna as a directional Yagi antenna, mostly for the FM bands. Now coming inside to the radio room slash studio, you see our ham radio equipment. Down below, we have the ICOM 7300. This is an amplifier for 1500 watts. In the middle, we have the directional controls for the Yagi antenna. And then we have an antenna tuner. Here we use the ham radio and the software defined radio to talk to folks all over the world, track the ISS and do other aspects of radio astronomy. We're eventually going to be able to do what's called an earth moon earth bounce from here. I need a little additional radio equipment to do that to get the right frequencies. Now this is an interesting item that's also at the Shamrock Banks Observatory. This is called the Itty Bitty Radio Telescope. It's a repurposed dish antenna and I use it to detect the sun and satellites in orbit using a satellite finder. While the Itty Bitty Radio Telescope is a nice item for a demonstrator of how radio astronomy works, this is actually called the Small Radio Telescope and it's being set up in a drift configuration just looking straight up towards the zenith. This is a repurposed C-band satellite television antenna. I'm going to be replacing that feed horn at the top with one that is sensitive to the hydrogen band at 1420 megahertz. And with this, I'll be able to see the arms of the Milky Way pass overhead and other radio sources in the solar system and the rest of the universe. This is a project for this winter. I've got the electronics to put together now. And that's something that I'm going to be doing in the next couple of months as the weather gets too bad for visual astronomy. And there you have it, the Shamrock Banks Observatory in a nutshell. Now, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be going through a series of videos. Uh, one is going to be what I've learned in astronomy for the last three years. I'll go over things like telescopes and mounts, plate solving and practical aspects of astronomy that I've learned. And then I'm going to have a series on technical astronomy or electronic assistant astronomy. That's how I control the mounts. I find targets. I do plate solving. I do the video captures and make these images. We'll also talk about some of the equipment like the robotic focusers. And we'll talk about the off-axis guiders versus a guide scope. And just kind of learn a little bit about some of the technical aspects of astronomy. So until then... This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from my home in Michigan. Take care, my friends. Too deep for me